Thank you, Grace Steve, for that powerful selection on this morning. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, as we come once again, break the bread of life with these, your people. We pray, Heavenly Father, that your Holy Spirit will have the right way. Holy Spirit, you are welcome to do what you do best. Show up and show out in the lives of these, your people. Come now and your people bless. Come give this sacred word success. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. From the gospel as recorded by St. John. St. John, the 8th chapter, verses 10 and 11. Familiar passage of scripture on today. And we thank God, we praise God on this fifth Sunday morning, the last Sunday morning in August of 2021. Mm -hmm. A day we will never see again once it is passed. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Yeah. And I want to talk to you this morning from this thought. Grace, mercy, and the law. Grace, mercy, and the law. God's son, Jesus Christ, did something for us that the law could never do. The law shows no mercy. The law shows us no grace. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. What is grace? Well, first of all, grace is something that we cannot earn. It is something that completely, it is something that is completely undeserved and unmerited. Well, grace is the free gift of God. In fact, grace is the only way that any of us can be saved. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. No other word, no other word so expresses the depth and the richness of the heart and the mind of God. Mercy. Mercy is when God has compassion, shows compassion, and pity and affection for his creation. Two things are essential in order to have mercy. First of all, one has to see a need. And secondly, second of all, one has to be able to meet that need. Brothers and sisters, God sees our need. And not only does he see it, but God goes out to meet those needs of ours. Because most of us cannot meet our own needs. And we need someone to stand in the gap. Amen. And the one who's standing in the gap for us is the one called Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. God the Father showed such mercy for us and toward us that he allowed his son to come down from glory and die a death on an old rugged cross so that we might live. Thank you. Thank you. When it comes to the law, the Israelites always talked about the law of Moses. Mm -hmm. For the Jews, there was four different types, uh, four different things that made up the law. One, it referred to the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. Secondly, it referred to the five books, the first five books of the Bible. Then it also referred to the prophets. And fourthly, it refers to the oral of what they call the scribal law. God's law, given in the Old Testament, was not enough for the Jews. They felt like it had to encompass all of the moral things. So they added to the law of God hundreds of hundreds of 
laws that put undue pressure and, and bound man to what man law said versus what the law of God actually stated. All right. The rules and regulations that they placed on us or on themselves, they felt like they really overrode the laws that Moses gave. And there were two groups of people during those days that really looked upon the law and stressed the law, even the laws that they made up. Uh, the first group was called the scribes. The scribes were the ones who uh, wrote the law and interpreted the law. The Pharisees were the ones who lived a very strict and pious life and they felt like they uh, were God's chosen and that they lived above everyone else, that they were self-righteous and everyone else lived in sin and they lived above sin. Right. Now maybe some of you have even heard people make the comment that I'm saved, sanctified and living above mm. sin. Mm -hmm. Evidently they don't know that if they're living above it, maybe they've already died and gone on to glory. Mm -hmm. Jesus, in this story that we're about to look at, exposed a common sin. Not only did that common sin exist then, it also exists now. The sin that Jesus exposed was a desire on our part to punish the sins of others while overlooking or ignoring our own sin. All right. In other words, we looked upon, and some of us look at other folk, and we can readily see their shortcomings. Come on, but we can't see where we fall Lord, short mercy. and miss mm -hmm. the mark. God. Let's go to our scriptures on this morning. Mm -hmm. St. John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. Uh, at the close of the seventh chapter, uh, where Jesus has had this confrontation in the temple courts with the scribes and the Pharisees, at the end of the day, when Jesus had finished teaching, uh, it says that everyone went to their own homes, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. All right. He went there to get in touch with his father where he could be alone from the hustle and bustle of the crowd. Hmm. And it says the next day, now early in the morning, uh, he came again to the temple. Jesus wasn't trying to avoid the scribes and the Pharisees because Jesus had a job to do. He was on a mission from heaven. So he wasn't about to let a little, you know, uh, a little difficulty, a little trials and tribulations stop him from doing what God sent him to do. And it says, and all the people, when he entered the temple to teach, he wasn't trying to hide. He was out there in the open. And all the people came to him. That was a problem. The scribes and the Pharisees were used to the people coming to them, looking upon them or looking at them like they were somebody. Now all of a sudden, here this guy from nowhere comes in and he's taking or stealing their glory. Because all of the people came to him and he sat down and taught them. Someone said, no man has ever taught like this man before. Then the scribes and the Pharisees not to be outdone, brought to him a woman caught in adultery. Here Jesus was down here teaching and preaching the word of God. Well, and all of a sudden, here these religious leaders mm -hmm. going to interrupt his teaching session mm -hmm. to come and bring him something that they could have dealt with. Mm -hmm. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, teacher, this woman was caught in adultery, in the very act. I'm teaching. Can't you see? I'm, I'm busy. But we have a problem, too. And we're going to see how you're going to deal with this. This wasn't the first time that they tried to trap Jesus. They said to him, now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. Here they are, the, cre the, creature, or the creatures that was created by God trying to tell the one who spoke the 
the law to Moses, what the law says. Now Moses in the law didn't ask us, but he commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? What, Jesus, do you have to say about it? We, we've, been, we've been pondering all night long how we can entrap you. So we set someone out to entrap this young lady. And now that we've got her, we've also got you. For if you say, you, you, you say let her go, then we're going to say you don't have any respect for the law of Moses. And that you are actually condoning sin. But if you say kill her, stone her, you, you're going to be breaking the law because the Romans have already said that the Jews, we don't have the authority anymore to condemn someone to death. So either way, we've got you. Mm. It says that they, this they said, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. Sometimes people will come to us and say, what do you think about so-and-so? They're trying to entrap you. Feeling like they have backed you into a corner. But Jesus, but Jesus trying to defuse the situation, but Jesus stooped down on the ground stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger mm -hmm. as though he did not hear them. Mm -hmm. You can do what you want to do, Jesus. You can try to ignore us all you want to, but we're not going anywhere. Right. You are stooping down writing on the ground because you know we got you backed into a corner. You can't get yourself out of this one. Now try to get out of this one, Jesus. Notice what they did. Jesus tried to ignore them. He stooped down and began to write on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear them. So when they continued asking him, these men were relentless. You ever ran into someone who was relentless? You were trying to ignore them, and the more you try to ignore them, the more they're getting on your nerve. The word says, so when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, he who is without sin, he who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. See, the Mosaic law said that the ones that were accusing someone had to first, that was of a capital punishment, that uh, condemned the person to death. It had to be done between at least two witnesses, maybe three had to be present, and they had to agree exactly in what they were testifying against. So he said, the law of Moses, what it's actually saying is, since you guys said she was caught in the act. Turn it back on. Come on. Well, that means you saw everything. So now, since you saw it. Come on, come on, Pastor. Come on. And you said she was caught in the act, and the last time I checked, she couldn't commit adultery by herself. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes, sir. Maybe one of you Pharisees that are in the crowd, maybe you were the one that you was caught with. And because of your rank and position, you were going to be exposed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So he who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. All right? And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Mm -hmm. Now we're not going to get into what he wrote because the Bible doesn't say it. Then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience. Come on, Pastor, that's good right there. What did they hear? He who is without sin. Yes. 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 You always pointing the finger at someone else. Yes. Brother James L. Scott used to say you have one finger pointed at me, three pointed back at yourself. The thumb might be somewhere anyway. Yeah. You're accusing me of one thing. Yeah. You're accusing this young lady of one thing, but how many things are you guilty of? He who is without sin, yeah. let him 
the ones that heard it, being convicted mm -hmm. by their own conscience, yes, went out one by one. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Can't you hear the stones dropping? Uh -huh. yeah. Beginning with the eldest or the oldest, yes, even to the yes, last. Sir, Jesus. Mm. And Jesus was left alone and the God. woman standing in the midst. All right. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? Where are they? I don't think Jesus got up until he heard the last stone fall. She said to him, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. He didn't say she hadn't sinned. That's right, Pastor. Notice, in, in other words, his last statement is acknowledging that she did sin. That's right. But here's where grace and mercy and the law collide. And Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. The law says stone her. But grace and mercy Come stand. On. Yes. Yes. Jesus knew that they already was trying to set a trap because they didn't bring the man to start with. But Jesus, on that day, showed the scribes and the Pharisees and everyone else who was around what grace and mercy can yes. do. Yes. Verse, versus what the law can do. Law, the law shows us, exposes our sin. But then Jesus came along. And the word of God declares, uh, the hymn writer says, that there is a fountain that's filled with blood, that's drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners like you and I can plunge beneath that flood and lose all of our guilty stains. Grace and mercy you, says give him another yeah, chance. Yeah, the law said cut him down. Yeah. But grace and mercy stepped in. Yeah. Let's go to some scriptures and see what Jesus was dealing with. Notice Jesus taught in the temple during the day. He went back out at night, but in the day, he once again came back to the temple. Luke 21, 37 and 38 says, and in the daytime, he talking about Jesus was teaching in the temple. But at night he went out and stayed on the mountain called Ovet. Talking about the Mount of Olives. Then early in the morning, Jesus started his day early in the morning, Sister Brown. And early in the morning, all the people came to him in the temple to hear him. Pastor gets up early in the morning. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Early in the morning. <laughs> so we can get started. God is calling us to do a full day's work. Yeah. To go into the vineyard and work. <laughs> and then at the end of the day, he says, whatever is right, I will pay you. Uh -huh. All right. Now, they said that this woman was caught in the very act. The law of Moses says that she should be stoned. But what do you say? Well, what did the law of Moses say? I'm glad you asked. Leviticus 20 and verse 10 says, The man who commits adultery with another man's wife, he who commits adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress, shall surely... How are you going to stone her if she was caught in the act? Where's the man? Where's the man? Why was this such a harsh punishment? Because adultery murders a marriage. Y'all don't hear me. He said adultery murders a marriage. And very rarely was this law ever enforced. Because again, the Mosaic law said that there had to be at least two of the three witnesses. And all of them, when they testified, had to testify to the exact same thing. There couldn't be any deviation in any of their testimony. So since she was caught in that, he who was without sin, let him cast the 
first stone. All right? Matthew chapter 7, verses 3 through 5 says, And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye? But do not consider the plank of the log in your own eye. Uh, how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye and look, a plank or log is in your own? You want to overlook your sin, which is even greater. Come on, come on, Pastor. But you're pointing out the fault of the Help sin in someone else. All right. Check this out. Matthew 5, 14 through 16 says, You are the light of the world. There's another passage that says, We are the salt of the earth. The earth be salt because the earth is decaying. Mankind with our evil ways and actions are decaying. We need salt to help preserve us. We need light. The earth needs light because the earth Mankind that does not know Jesus is living in darkness. So he says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hillside cannot be hid. Nor do, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. So let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Yes, yes. He says, let your light shine. Yes, yes. In other words, let your lifestyle that you live speak for you. That's right. They don't, people won't see one side of you one minute and another side the next minute. You with the folk in the world raising hell and cursing and on the other side you're talking about how good the Lord is. <laughs> you are the light of the world. And if the light is in you, See, here's the thing. As Christians, we receive the light. We receive the light from Jesus. And then as Christians, we are also transferring that light to the lives of other people that we witness to. Pardon right. Talking about where grace, mercy, and the law, where grace and mercy meets the law. Romans 3 and 10, here we go. As it is written, God has looked us up from the head to the toe. As it is written, there is none. God have mercy. There is none righteous. No. Not one. Well, how about Adam and Eve? Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve weren't righteous. Adam and Eve. God gave them, you know, that ability uh, uh, to be sin sinless in the beginning. But it wasn't righteous. Righteousness comes from Jesus Christ. It comes from God. Adam and Eve, they weren't righteous. David said, I was shaping in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. I know I'm righteous. Well, you're righteous now if you've accepted Jesus Christ. But before you accepted Jesus Christ, the word says you weren't. So now who, who are you going to believe? There is none. N-O-N-E. None. No. And then get this, Romans 3, 23, for all. How many were born saved? No, not How many were born saved? No, not one. No, not one. How many of you have ever sinned? All of them. All of them. How many of you have never sinned? <laughs> if you say you did, you're sitting right now. <laughs> For the word declares, Romans 3, 23, for all, A-L-L, -L, have sin and fall short of the glory of God. We've all missed them all. I don't care how, how good you try to live, we're going to always mess up apart from Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was the only one that was ever born righteous. Jesus Christ is the only one that has never sinned. For all A-L-L -L have sinned and fall short. 
a standard. Yes, he did, Pastor. See, we want to compare ourselves to other people because they're just like we are. Messed up from the floor up. All right? Thank God for his grace and his mercy. Payday is coming. Everyone is going to receive their pay. You're going to get your, your pay. You're going to receive your pay either from the devil or you're going to receive it from Jesus Christ. But all of us are going to get paid. All of us are working. You're either working for the devil or you're working for Jesus Christ. There's no in between. You're either working for God or you're working for the devil. For the wages of sin. The devil said, I got to pay this for you. For the wages of sin is death. Total separation from God. No reprieve. But the gift of God is eternal life. In Christ Jesus our Lord. So I want to hear him say, servant, well done. You were faithful over a few things. Now I'm going to make the rule over many. The only way I can get that and hear those words is that God has to shower his grace and his mercy on us. Trying to live by the law is not going to do it for us. I'm always come up short. You're going to come up short. But thank God for grace and mercy. All right? So then, so then, who are you to judge another's servant? I'm a servant of Jesus Christ. So who are you to judge me? Who are you to judge another servant? To his own master, he will stand or fall. One day all of us are going to stand before Jesus Christ and give an account of our stewardship. Indeed, he will be made to stand. For God is able. <laughs> Mm. That's it, right it does not matter how many times we fall down that we may stumble and fall by the grace of God. Thank you, God. By God's mercy, God. we're going to get back up again. God. For God is able to make him stay. Yes, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Thank I'm God. strong in the strength of Almighty God yes. and His Son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We fall, we make mistakes, oh, but we get back up again. Talking about his grace and his mercy versus the law. All right? Therefore, let us not judge one another. See, he says, I know you're guilty of it, and there's no sense in saying you're not. All of us are. He says, let it, therefore, let us not judge anymore, uh, judge one another anymore. Yes, Jesus. Huh? But rather resolve this not to put a stumbling block or cause to fall in our brother's way. We're supposed to be exalting one another, helping lift one another up, not putting stumbling blocks or casting stones at one another. Just as God has shown his grace and mercy towards us, we should be showing grace and mercy towards one another. All right? I love this passage. For God yes, so loved the world yes, that he gave his only begotten son. You talking about grace and mercy? Mm -hmm. That whosoever believes in him should not perish mm -hmm. but have everlasting life. Why would he do that? Because the world is already condemned. And because of his love that he has for us, mm -hmm. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. Mm -hmm. Brother Webb, why would he do that and the world was already condemned without him? Mm -hmm. That's right, Pastor. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him yeah. might be saved. Yeah. Thank God for his grace yeah. and yeah. his mercy. Yeah. Thank you. Let's go ahead and finish this up. Who then? Or who shall bring? Stop pointing fingers. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God who also makes intercessions for us. The law could not make intercessions for us, but grace and mercy. Yeah. Grace and mercy steps in. Yes, sir. Where the law condemns, grace and mercy yes, steps in. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
The Holy Spirit is making intercessions for us from the earth to glory and in glory. Jesus Christ is making intercessions around the throne of God for each and every one of us. Let's bring this on in. If we confess our sins. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And not only that, and to cleanse us from all. All of our unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And his word is. But if we just confess, all we have to do is own up. Lord, I messed up. But give me another chance. He says, I'm going to give you another chance. All you have to do is ask because you have not because you have not. Last scripture, let's go home. If we confess our sins, that was my last one. No, you didn't get in there. You got to get first John 2. Damn it. See, y'all trying to trick me. Then we get St. John 1, verses 9 and 10. Then we have to go to St. John chapter 2, or first John 2. 1 and 2. Don't worry, I got it. I got it, brother. First John. Chapter 2. Verses 1 and 2. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Yeah. If we sin, we have an advocate. Yeah. Someone who will stand in the gap yeah. and tell God to forgive us. Yes, Lord. To give us another chance. Yes, for they know not what they do. Yes. But they believe and they trust in me. Yes, so Lord. Jesus says, Father, if you give them another chance, yes, I'll go down and I'll send the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will seal them yes. until the day of redemption. Yes. Whenever we mess up. The Holy Spirit makes intercessions. Yeah. Jesus makes intercessions. Yeah. And the Father showers his love and mercy yeah. on each and every one of us. Yeah. The Lord once again says, cut it down. Yeah. But grace and mercy. Yeah. Thank you. So I thank God for his grace. Thank you, thank you for his mercy. Yeah. And I thank him for what the law could not do. Isn't it good to have a Savior? Yes, yes it is. Right. Like Jesus? Yes, it is. Let us all stay. Maybe there's one today. Maybe there's one today who's not accepted Jesus Christ and made him your choice. If you have not accepted him, now is your opportunity to get it right with him. Is there one on today? Is there one on today? If you don't have a church home and you're looking for one, and the Holy Spirit is leading you here, our doors revolves on the hinges of welcome. Jesus said when he was out there in the plains of Hermon, in the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he says, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. We come here to worship and to praise and to lift up one another, but the church itself belongs to Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. You may be seated and the praise team is going to bless us with a couple of selections and then we're going to give the benediction.